Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, uh, webinar of Permit COE. Today, we have uh, with us uh, Jesse Harrison from the CSC IT Center for Science, who is going to talk about the Permit COE building blocks and workflows to streamline bio biological analysis pipeline. My name is Daniel Tomas Lopez. I am involved in Permit COE on behalf of MBLDBI, and I am going to host this webinar. Before starting, I would like to make you aware that uh, this webinar is being recorded, including the questions and answers section, and that the recording will be disseminated afterwards. After the presentation, we will have time for questions, so please use the Q&A button in your Zoom panel for asking questions during the webinar. Please know that all materials are licensed under a CC BY 4.0 license, except where further licensing details might be provided. So Permit COE, briefly, is the HPC Exascale Center of Excellence for Personalized Medicine in Europe. Permit COE focuses on simulation of cellular mechanistic models, which are essential to translate the omics data into medical actions. The performance of cell simulation software is still nowadays not enough to address problems such as tumor evolution or finding personalized treatment for patients. So Permit COE is going to scale up a different software for cell simulations to the present HPC exascale systems in order to enable the creation of models uh, of cellular functions of medical relevance. So Permit COE is going to achieve this goal through a series of objectives. First, it will optimize cell level simulation software to run in the pre exascale platforms. Second, Permit COE is developing a series of use cases that will show the applications of the Permit COE products in different fields of clinical interest, such as drug synergies for cancer treatments or performing modeling of COVID-19 virus and patient's tissue. Additionally, Permit COE also has as objectives training uh, the biomedical professionals in the use of the tools, integrating the permit communities into the European HPC exascale system, and building the basis for the sustainability of permit COE. Today's presentation is going to show how permit COE addresses biological use cases using a single shared approach in which uh, semi-automated workflows are constructed using purpose design uh, building blocks. So let me now introduce our speaker. Dr. Jesse Harrison is a senior, senior data scientist and project manager at CSC IT Center for Science in Finland, where he leads the Horizon EU BioDT project. His other tasks have included our environment design, maintenance and support on CSC computing platforms, bioinformatics tool development, and teaching. Prior to joining CSC in 2019, Jesse held postdoctoral positions in microbial ecology, astrobiology, and environmental chemistry at the universities of Helsinki, Turku, Vienna, and Edinburgh. So, Jesse, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, Daniel. So, I'm just going to um, share my screen and bring up my slides. So, one second. So, please bear with me for, for a moment. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully the slides should now be visible to you. Yes. And you can all hear me, so that's great. So I'm very happy to be here to, to talk about, um, especially about the workflows and the Pyramid COE project. So uh, biological data analysis pipelines are, of course, a, a problem that many different research pro projects um, are, are uh, working with and, and also struggling with to, to implement in practice. It's not an easy topic. So I want to talk a little bit about how we have approached this um, in, in Permit COE project and what solutions we have been developing to, to address this. And so as a, as a talk outline, just going through a little bit about um, the building blocks and workflows concept on a general level. Uh, talking a little bit about what are the types of elements, especially from a user perspective, that are, are useful um, to have when we are working with, with um, ways to, to try and automate uh, workflows and make, make them simple enough to use. Uh, I will talk a little bit about ways in which we are packaging software as building blocks, so actually introducing the building block concept. Um, 
what is the current status of, of workflows and the permit COE project? Uh, what are the resources that we have available to, to different users at, at this point of the project? And also where we are taking the, the project next. So just a little bit about the project. So this is now in its uh, third year. And currently we are still in a phase where we have time to, to work until let's say late in, into, left, into next year. So there's still uh, this amount of time left in the permit COE project. Uh, but just starting maybe with this uh, biological data analysis topic and more general and talking about the typical challenges that we are facing. So there's a number of different bottlenecks that uh, we are faced with when we want to, to begin implementing data analysis pipelines in the, in the life sciences. So we need uh, a lot of different types of uh, software installed. Uh, and in addition to this, Usually it's not about just running a single analysis step, but instead we have many interconnected steps. So this, need, this means that we need many different types of tools. And usually we would begin with this uh, situation where we need to actually install all the software. So this is a, a bottleneck of sorts. This might not be a, a trivial, trivial task to undertake if you are working, for example, on a high performance computing platform. Let's say that you don't have the, the necessary software already installed there, for example. Uh, there's also a bottleneck to do with, with transparency. Uh, so everything you do in your data analysis pipeline is again interconnected also in terms of the um, actual analytical steps. So everything you do it's just connected and later steps depend on earlier ones. So if other researchers want to make sense of your data analysis pipeline, they need to understand uh, what you're doing in each of the steps. Mm. <clears throat> One topic that affects many different fields, fields is that there's been uh, very much a transition to, to working with big data sets. And this means that uh, there's often a programming skills bottleneck as well. Um, and there are many, many different tools that need to be mastered uh, to be able to, to, to do this type of analysis. There's also a portability bottleneck. So uh, let's say that if you install your software on a single platform, it might not be transferable to another platform directly, or at least it generates a lot of extra work. So these are all uh, typical problems and bottlenecks to do with, with biological data analysis. And <clears throat> in, in the permit COE project, we are developing ways to, to address these bottlenecks. And just to talk a little bit about the project to, to start with, well, we have a number of different um, modeling tools that we are wanting to use. So these are these existing uh, personalized medicine modeling tools that are being scaled up for, for high performance computing use. And what we want to do is, is to make it possible to combine these modeling tools with a lot of uh, other, um, let's say, supporting functions and, uh, and so on, so that you can actually go ahead and do everything you need to do in your uh, biological data analysis pipeline. So the, the concept that we have been building here is, is this idea about uh, building blocks. So you, let's say in a, in a very simple sense, you could combine multiple building blocks into a single uh, workflow. And the idea is also that you could uh, switch these building blocks interchangeably. Uh, so uh, me meaning that you combine, you could combine different building blocks to, to construct different types of workflows for different types of use cases. Uh, to talk a little bit about the um, tools and also the use cases. So we have a number of different core modeling tools in the Permit Go project. Just to go through these very quickly. So there's a, a tool called Cobrexa, which is for uh, metabolic modeling. There's a tool called BusyCell, which is about looking at uh, the evolution and dynamics of, of multi-cell populations. So this is, for example, for tumor masses. 
There's also a tool called MAPOS, which is about um, cell signaling and uh, regulatory network modeling. FESI BOS, which is a, a combination in the sense of uh, FESI cell and MAPOS. So it's a FESI cell add-on uh, that can be used to look especially at responses of, of cells to the surrounding microenvironment. And then we have also CellNopt and Carnival. Also, CellNopt is about signal transduction network modeling. Carnival is instead a tool for creating, so automatically creating signaling network visualizations that explain uh, some of the underlying gene expression data that are being used. And so what are the actual use cases that we have in the project? So we're looking at topics including cancer diagnosis uh, work. So based on omics information, uh, synergies of different drugs for cancer treatment. We've been focusing a lot on, on COVID-19 modeling. And also we are looking at use cases, including tumor evolution based on omics data. So single cell omics data, imaging data. There's also this personalized modeling of rare disease related patients, but uh, this is taking something of a backseat in the project. So we have focusing mostly on these other other four cases. The idea is, to, is there that we can <clears throat> use these different use cases to illustrate the concept of, of building blocks and workflows that we have been developing and in the same time also solving some interesting uh, questions to do with these uh, uh, topics. And the idea is to, to develop tools that are then useful for uh, end user communities. So end users can be anything from from people who are working very closely with bioinformatics and have understanding of, of a command line and so on to, to clinicians. So this is the kind of uh, larger vision behind the, the project. Okay, so <clears throat> just from a user perspective. So when we are working with um, data analysis pipeline and we want something that's easy and nice to use. So there's a kind of wish list that we can put together. So it would be nice if all the data analysis software that we want to use is available in some format that is prepackaged, uh, so we don't have to worry about that as, as much. It would be also uh, very nice if the tools are served through a common interface. So often when we are working with different modeling tools or data analysis tools, they all have different interfaces that we need to, to learn and so on. So um, from an end user viewpoint, it's uh, much easier if there's a single common interface. Uh, we want to also be able to use the software as part of these uh, complex data analysis pipelines that differ from case to case a lot. Mm. And something that we need more and more is, is also computing power. So we want to be able to run our data analysis tasks on, on multiple different platforms and uh, in the context of the permit COE project, we are looking especially at supercomputing platforms, how the tools and workflows can be scaled up to uh, make use of this uh, uh, computing power that's available to supercomputing systems. So I've been talking about building blocks quite a bit. So what does actually define a, a building block? So what is a building block? The idea here is that um, we can think of it as a, as a sort of um, way to, to compute a single predetermined functionality. So a single building block performs a single specific function in a, in a workflow. And that function very much differs from workflow to workflow or the stage in which you are in a workflow. In the Permit COE project, we have been uh, splitting these into different categories. And for each of these categories, the idea is that you can use, of course, the building block on its own or as part of a complex workflow. But the groups that we have in the project are uh, intra intercellular simulations, also network reconstruction, uh, omics analysis. We have a separate category for different machine learning approaches, and also these auxiliary tools that uh, are there to kind of support everything else that is happening in, in the workflow. And how are we making these available? Well, 
the idea is that we package all the software in containers, and I will talk about containers a little bit more uh, soon. But uh, what I'd like to bring up here is that we are using the containerization software called Aptainer. It also used to be called Singularity before, but it's been renamed to Aptainer. And the reason behind this is that it's a, uh, a software that's widely supported on different supercomputing infrastructures. So we have found it to be uh, very suitable for, for this purpose. And in and, and the longer term, we also hope to distribute these containers through uh, a container registry. So more or less a, a register of different pre-built containers. And this is called uh, ORAS. A little bit more about the building block definition still. So what it's considered in the project is a unit of work in a sense like a black box. So uh, you feed the data to it and it does a particular computation and gives you uh, some results out. So it has inputs and outputs. You can uh, use it as part of your workflows as, as needed and you can also use them uh, as, uh, as, as a pipe, so saying that you have your building blocks arranged in a sequence, one runs first, it gives something out, it moves to the next building block and so forth. So combinations of different uh, building blocks can be used to run different workflows. And <clears throat> containers, so uh, this, this might be a topic that's not familiar to, to, to many biologists, so what this is, it's basically a, a way to reproduce an entire environment. You can think of it as a sort of separate world of its own. So basically a, a system that has, uh, well, you have your, even your own um, operating system or Linux distribution inside it and so on, and then all the software you need to run uh, what you need to run. And to produce it, you have a, a recipe. So it's a, a text file basically that can be used to build the environment. So it's a reproducible recipe. It's also then a reproducible environment. And what containers do, it, it gives us a standardized way to, to uh, package software and also different dependencies. And what that means is that uh, from a user perspective, you have to worry much less than about having everything you need uh, in place and so on. So. The idea is that uh, you can either build the, the container or you can actually also uh, access a pre-built container that has everything you need to, to run, run the software. <clears throat> and especially on supercomputing platforms, there's also often this issue that uh, there's a lot of software out there that involves running many small files and uh, this uh, container containerization software can help with uh, alleviating this problem because you end up with a uh, single container file uh, that can actually mask away let's say ten thousands of tens of thousands of smaller files that uh, well from the viewpoint of the host environment where you're running this uh, it won't see them and about access to the building blocks. So we are making these uh, available to, to end users and we have a couple of uh, options for this at the moment. So there's a separate uh, GitHub repository for, for building blocks that we are developing. And uh, we are distributing all the different building blocks under the Apache 2 license. And we are also currently working on, on making the building blocks available through other resources. So one example is this uh, Elixir bio tools uh, repository that can be used to, to also share these. And how to actually use the building blocks. We have been developing also a, a single uh, common interface. So this is uh, at the moment a um, command line interface. So there's a Python package that you can install. So it's called permit co or permit coe package. And <clears throat> This aims to simplify the execution of the different building blocks and, and workflows. So there are a couple of commands that I've brought up here. One is called uh, permit coe execute building block. So that can be used to run individual building blocks. And then there's also 
primitive COE execute application. And what application means here is that uh, it will run the entire workflow. So using this uh, application word interchangeably with, with workflow. Mm. One idea behind this is also that people don't have to, to interact directly with container software. So uh, without this kind of thing, you have to know a little bit about containers and how to run them. But uh, this uh, permit COE Python package hides that away so that you can use the uh, commands of the permit COE package instead. And <clears throat> to, to run the workflows, there's also support for, for different workflow managers. So um, these are used to automate the execution of the, the workflow. And the uh, workflow managers that we support at the moment are uh, PyComps. There's also Snake Make and uh, Nextflow support in this. <clears throat> and a little bit more about the um, command line interface. So maybe this image that I have at the bottom is the most relevant in here. So some examples of arguments that we can feed to it. So there's an input uh, argument, output argument. So basically saying where the data are coming in from, where the data should go to, or where the uh, modeling output should go to. It's possible to configure the models using uh, a single uh, YAML file. So a con configuration file. Uh, to use the tool also, you need to specify a temporary directory. So this is something that's used to store temporary files. There's also arguments then for, for help functions uh, and then uh, some other functionalities for running these uh, workflows on, on high, perform high performance computing platforms that I won't go into too much detail in, in here. Mm. <clears throat> About the status of the work at the moment. So we are in a position in the project where we are uh, wanting to finalize a lot of the workflows by, by uh, May. So uh, we have three cases here that I've brought up that are perhaps the, the most advanced at the moment. So especially the COVID-19 uh, modeling workflow is something that we've been work working on. Uh, drug synergies as well. So ways to identify combinations of different drugs for, for cancer treatment. There's a couple of different workflows for this. And uh, we are also working on tumor evolution use case. So this is something that it is a little bit uh, newer, but uh, we have made some good progress on it and are hoping to finalize it in the coming months. And at the moment, we have a, a total of 17 different building blocks that are available. Very broadly speaking, they uh, fall into data pre-processing and then into personalized modeling. So this, this is kind of the core of the workflow and then post-processing of the modeling outputs as well. And we have been doing <coughs> testing of the building blocks on a couple of different high performance computing platforms. So uh, Modern Nostrum 4 on BSC and then Mahdi on the uh, CSC side. Mm. Now, I wanted to just bring this up as an example of a workflow. So I'm not an expert on, on this particular workflow or cancer modeling, but um, in case there are some of you in the audience who know more about this topic, then this might be of interest to you. In any case, I, I can talk a little bit about this. So I can say that we have a list of different inputs. So this is for the, let's say, let's go back a little bit for the drug synergies uh, workflow. So we have list of genes that is, is uh, fed into the model. Also mutation data from different cell lines. And then here you have this um, uh, model construction and personalization, personalization step where you have uh, carnival and then uh, fizzy cell and so on being, being used. Well, actually a number of the different core tools that are being used to produce a, a then um, matrix of different drugs. So a list of uh, different single and combined treatments that could be used for this, this purpose. Mm. About resources that are available to users. So 
Uh, we have end user documentation that's available on the permit COE uh, read the docs page. So permit COE read the docs.io. Mm. <clears throat> we are also producing different types of tutorials, uh, and these are on the permit COE website, so permit COE.eu. And the GitHub repository that houses different building blocks and workflows is uh, github.com slash permit COE. And a little bit about the user end user documentation. So I have this picture here that talks a little bit about the content. So we have ways to <clears throat> install the, the permit COE command line interface package, what's actually included in the uh, in that base package, list of existing building blocks and workflows, and, and so forth. And about feature actions in the project. So there's still quite a lot of activities ongoing. So we are still uh, developing workflows and, and building blocks. Um, something we are also in the middle of still is this workflow benchmarking and scalability testing. So making sure that these can run as, as well as possible on different uh, high performance computing environments. Mm. The extension of the end user documentation and making it uh, easier and easier to read and also richer in content is something that we are working on. So this will be finalized by the end of the project. Uh, the idea is to have, in addition to step-by-step -step, step text tutorials, also short videos that talk about how to use the tools that we have been producing. Mm. And as mentioned earlier, we are working on ways to, to distribute the building blocks outside GitHub as well. Another topic is that, okay, we've been using this Aptainer uh, software to, to containerize the different software, but uh, we of course realize that we have users who want to use these uh, locally, for example, as well. So we are also working on alternative uh, container software versions of the tools, so Docker. And we have at the moment this command line interface, but we are also looking at, uh, we're thinking of other ways in which we can make uh, user interfaces available. So uh, graphical user interfaces. So these could be, for example, web interfaces for some of the in individual core tools or other ways to, to work with the tools in a more interactive fashion, for example, for the purpose of uh, visualizing some of the uh, modeling output data. So with, with that, I come to the end of my presentation. So. I'd like to thank you, and I'd also be happy to take your questions at this point. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much. Very nice explanation and uh, putting in perspective everything that is being done in Permit. So everyone, please, you can use the Q&A button in your Zoom panel to uh, ask any questions. Um, and while we receive questions, let me start with one. Um, what about if uh, users um, use the the permit COE building blocks and they um, encounter any issue? They think something can be optimized, or yeah, they have questions. Uh, is there a way they can they can ask for yeah they can ask questions or get clarifications? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So we are of course, also making this type of communication and feedback possible. And that is part of the permit COE project. So there are ways to provide feedback uh, on, on the tool function. And this goes directly to the uh, developers of the tools. So uh, the GitHub repositories and, and also the, of course, the pages of the individual tools have information on how to, how to reach us. And there's also a contact form on the on the permit COE website that can be used for, let's say, all types of feedback. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Any questions from the participants? I have another question. Uh, meanwhile, um, um, in terms of like, if 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 a, a user has uh some type of building blocks that come from uh a totally different project to permit coe or have been built in a different way 
are they should they be compatible uh so you mean is it possible to package your own software and building blocks uh, you mean yeah and, so inc and include some building blocks from permit theory yeah maybe... so th there, there's also tutorials on the on the read the docs about packaging your own tools as building blocks but um uh this is something that we are still developing in terms of the content but uh, it is it is possible so the idea is that uh, you know the use cases are there to demonstrate things but it is also possible to to uh, package your own tools for use okay okay thank you for that uh, clarification so i'm going to give it a couple more minutes in case participants have uh, questions meanwhile i'm just going to uh, show the screen of uh, show the slide of uh, upcoming webinars and courses um so uh, on in January, we are going to have the next session of the webinar, the Permit COE webinars with uh, Vera Pancaldi. And as well, we are planning a course on introduction to HPC for life scientists that will take place in Barcelona. And more information is uh, coming soon. And uh, finally, also to let everyone know that the applications for the Permit COE summer school that will take place uh, next June 2023 are already open and you can access all these events through our uh, website Permit COE, which I have also now put the link in the in the chat and of course you can also find the links to the recordings of the previous webinars okay any questions from the audience Okay, if not, um, just Jesse, do you have anything else to comment? Otherwise we can bring the webinar to a close. Uh, not much. So if you have any feedback, then you are of course free to send it to us uh, also afterwards using the contact form. So we're all always interested in hearing the opinions of people who are looking to actually use these tools. So this helps us, helps us with the design and also uh, well, conceptual development and these kinds of things. Otherwise, I'd just like to say, you know, thank you for coming along to the meeting. So, yeah. thank you and thank you, thank you, Jesse, for your time and thank you, the participants, for coming and see you in the next session. Goodbye.